I want to be straightforward with you how it is to hitchhike in Turkey on the Black Sea coast as a foreign girl. I got a lot of messages telling me that it's so dangerous, that I will be killed, that people will rape me and that I will absolutely not make it to wherever I want to go. Of course, it can be dangerous and not all people are good. But in my experience, I don't want to miss hitchhiking in my life. Because I met really good friends in hitchhiking. I met the kindest people and those memories and moments I experienced because of hitchhiking are one of the most precious in my life. So during the last week I hitchhiked with 18 cars and there was only one or two persons that made me feel uncomfortable. So the first thing you should know is that probably only men will stop for you if you are a solo female traveler like me. So what happened with these two incidents was the following. The first one was a guy, he was around my age and he spoke only Turkish. He started small talk with me, he seemed to be really nice and during the conversation I realized that he just wanted to know everything about my love life, if I had a boyfriend, if I'm going to meet a male friend where I was going or not and just like these questions that make a female traveler uncomfortable and I still don't understand why males have to ask these questions or why do they have to make you feel uncomfortable in the first place I don't know what's in their mind but yeah you have to prepare for these kind of questions a lot so I'm usually telling people that I have a boyfriend that I'm going to meet my friends in the next place I say that I'm meeting several friends girls and guys if they're asking and I'm telling them that I'm not traveling alone, just this specific kind of route. So this guy, I don't know why, but he started to ask me these kind of questions and then he asked me when was the last time I had sex. And then I was like, seriously? I mean, what the fuck? I just told him that there are really strange people outside that make me feel uncomfortable with their questions and then he's asking me this kind of question this was so ridiculous so I just said can I get out of the car now but he didn't do anything he didn't touch me or whatever I he just made me uncomfortable with his questions and I told him that it's really not good to ask these kind of questions to a girl but I don't know in his mind he didn't agree and then I just went out of the car. Then the other person, he picked me up and he drove me for around 100 kilometers, which was really kind of him. And he also started to ask me the same kind of questions. If I had a boyfriend, why don't I have a boyfriend in Trabzon, the city where I was leaving from, um, if he can be my boyfriend and these stupid kind of questions. And he was like 55 years old, like he could have been my father. And I just said, no, absolutely, it's not possible because I have only one boyfriend and this is not how it's going to work in life. Like, like I have to explain grown-up men the concept of relationships. It's so ridiculous. <laughs> Whatever, he was actually really nice. Like, I feel it's a cultural thing to ask these kind of questions or they are just curious, I don't know, but actually he was really nice and we stopped at some places which looked really really beautiful and we decided to get out of the car and he just tried to take a selfie with me and tried to push me close to him so it looked better in the picture or I don't know and he started to touch me on my waist and um, I said, yeah, my Istamiro, these kind of things. But I did not get out of the car with him. <laughs> In fact, I continued my journey with him. And the reason for that is because sometimes you have this kind of feeling that the person is really nice and kind, but at the same time they don't understand that this is too much or this makes me uncomfortable. So I explained to him that it's not okay to ask these questions, it's not okay to touch my waist because you're making, you're taking a selfie with me and I feel like he understood this but he was actually not a bad person and if you are planning to hitchhike in Turkey especially on the Black Sea coast 
you should be prepared to learn a little bit of Turkish because I haven't met one single person that spoke English here. So 100% of the drivers didn't speak any other language than Turkish here. So another thing I'm doing is when I'm getting inside of the car, I'm trying to start a conversation with the driver so that we get kind of a connection and I try to be the driver's friend. So this makes me more comfortable because I think if the if I am the friend of the driver, he will not kill me or her rape me. Because you're not doing these kind of things to your friends. At least that's what I'm thinking. And I think if you're just showing that you're open-minded, that you're self-confident and that you know where you're going and what you're doing, then the percentage of something bad to happen will decrease. At least that's my feeling. And in those last days, I never felt that I was in a dangerous situation. I never felt that something was going on with the driver wanting to do something to me. So why I am hitchhiking in the first place? There are two reasons for it. First is, I'm traveling by myself and I want to meet other people. I want to have closer connections to the people here and it just makes my day better to meet locals and to be around other people who know the area and who can show you better places and help you. The second reason is sometimes it's really really difficult to find the public transportation here to the exact spot where you want to go and in most cases it's so much easier to just hitchhike there. People will pick you up after five to ten minutes and mostly they are just really really friendly people that are trying to help you. And of course I'm not trusting everybody. There are a lot of rides where I'm just saying hey I want to get out of the car or I'm not even getting inside the car in the first place. And it's very important to be self-confident and to tell the driver if you don't like something. And you should make it clear that you know your way, you know where you're going and you're trying to make friends, you're trying to have a good day and if it's a good day for you it will be also a good day for the driver. So yeah, that's it from me. I hope um, you got some useful insights. It's going to rain and bye bye.